Hey guys, welcome back to Cisco WebEx calling video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to do an initial setup of our WebEx calling and assign appropriate numbers to our locations. Imagine being able to leverage an enterprise graded call, call, uh, cloud calling mobility and the PX, PVX feature along with messaging, meeting and calling all in a central location. This is exactly what the Cisco WebEx calling, uh, calling has to offer. Now, you can do a smooth transition from your on-premise network into WebEx Calling, which we have a dedicated video for that. So now let's take a look at what WebEx Calling looks like when, uh, from a con configuration perspective. Right now, what you're seeing on my screen is that you've got a control hub default dashboard. On the left-hand side, you see you got your uh, service and then you'll see the calling. So if you click on the calling, this is where we configure most of our calling related features, such as the phone numbers, the PSTN numbers, connectivity to PSTN, uh, defining location of different branch offices we might have, and then how the call routing will connect to our on-premise devices. From our chopped lectures on our uh, lecture on video, you have learned that WebEx calling can be connected to either Cisco Cloud PSTN or Cloud Connected Partner PSTN or on-premise gateway. For the purpose of this lab, I'm going to show you how to connect with uh, both Cisco PSTN as well as on-premise PSTN. Now, in this uh, video, we're, in this particular video, we're just going to talk about the overview about how you assign the numbers, but as later in the course, you'll learn how to configure a Cisco router on premise to register with the WebEx. Now here you'll see that from the department, uh, from the menu, you got num under calling, you got the numbers. This is where you're supposed to see the phone numbers. So if I go to my other account, Now this account, I don't have any new numbers yet assigned to it. And this is going to be the account that is going to register to on-premise network. But this particular account, which uh, if I go to calling, I do have a telephone number assigned uh, from Cisco PSTN. Now this part, uh, second account, I have, reg I have assigned or uh, subscribed to Cisco PSTN service. So that means that I don't have to worry about configuring, managing those gate PSTN gateways or any sort of any infrastructure issues. Cisco provide all the redundancy, the services, manage, upgrade, everything that needs to be done to keep that PSTN working. Cisco does give me a phone number, such as in this scenario, 12269066667. That number is provisioned on a device somewhere in the Cisco's data center from where the call will come into my particular account. I, I did not have to configure any local gateway. I did not have to configure any uh, uh, dial plan. All I simply did was accept the terms and condition with the Cisco's uh, uh, contract, and that's pretty much all there is. Now I can start sending calls to uh, in local call, long distance international through the Cisco PSTN. How do I get charged? Well, Cisco will bill me for the, the number, uh, the destination of the call, as well as the duration of the call but that part we'll leave it uh, uh, later. So going back to our uh, uh, demo account, so this is where we're going to configure uh, our new numbers. Now, here you'll see you got uh, location. Now in this location, uh, this account, I have one location called Las Vegas. Now, whereas another location uh, account, I may I have two accounts, Las Vegas and Toronto. So it is possible that in your WebEx call location you might uh, or account you might have a user who are located in Toronto, you might uh, you might have users located in like say uh, Mumbai and many other many other places. If you do have people in different locations, you may want to create a separate location for them. So right now, when you look at the location, you'll see that there is a little uh, warning or alert symbol, the triangular with exclamation mark. That's an indication that further configuration is required. Whereas here, uh, I have one location and I'm going to assign a phone numbers to that particular location. So to do that, what you're going to do, you're going to open this location by simply clicking on it. And here you can configure some parameters. 
we will go through uh, step by step in the subsequent videos of how to customize various options in these parameters. So here you'll see the main number currently, there's nothing assigned to it. And if I click on this uh, little arrow, I, will be, I should be able to select a main number for my account. But because I don't have a number assigned to it, I obviously I won't be able to choose that. So going back to main, uh, you'll see the PSTN connection currently set to unmanage, uh, unassigned manage. Now let's take a look at my second uh, application or second account. There, if I go to, let's say, Toronto location, you'll see that I have a main number assigned and the PSTN connection is called Cisco PSTN Cisco Calling Plan. So I am subscribed to that particular plan and where Cisco provides all the PSTN connectivity toward me. Now, there's nothing really much to do in the management perspective other than just give a location. As you can see, I'm still on a trial and that's pretty much all there is. So if I go to my new account, the demo account, and I want to, let's say, add a PSTN. So what I'll do, I'll click on manage and it's gonna give me three different options. Now the connection type basically decide what kind of PSTN service you're going to have. So many organizations who have invested a lot of money over the last five, 10 years, chances are that they may already have on-premise PSTN connection. Either they may already have uh, uh, paid for it, or they might be in a, a contract with those PSTN provider for the next five years, for example. Sometimes you go to a longer contract to get a better rate. Well, if you do have that, it is possible that you could continue to use those PSTN as part of your WebEx calling, either for temporary purposes during the transition, or it could be even permanent. So that means that you could route the call through the gateway on your office to the PSTN in connected to your office gateway. But to keep simple, we're going to now assign a premise-based PSTN for our network. Now, when I click next to the premise based PSTN, I got, off, I, I got choice of cloud base, which I'm not going to select right now. So whenever you create a premise based PSTN, it's going to ask you to choose a routing choice. Now, routing choice is basically very similar to route pattern, route list in call manager or CUCM. Here, first you add, a, uh, you can either, whatever the number you dial, you could send that calls to either a trunk directly, or you could send it to a route group. A route, a route list. In this scenario, it, you only have two options, either a trunk, which is IP address of the device that we're sending the calls to, or a route group, which contains a trunk, one or more trunk. Again, we have spoke about that in our lectures in terms of what they are and what their capabilities are. It is always a good idea to choose a route group or, uh, over a trunk, if, uh, even if you have only one trunk. Now, the fact that we don't have any route group or trunk created, what we're gonna do, we're gonna simply select none. We're gonna confirm, and then we're gonna continue next. So here you can see it's telling me that I'm going to add a premise-based PSTN. The type is route group, trunk selected, nothing is defined. We're going to add a number right now. And because we don't, have a, we're, not, we're not gonna actually use a valid number, we're just gonna use the dummy numbers. So the Las Vegas location, premise based connection, click next, and we're going to enter a number by manually typing it. So the number we're going to dial for 417-555, and then any four digit in this range. Now, 417-555 is, is basically a unique number that might be configured on the PSTN routers that we don't have control over, but the last four digit may be for our own internal extension. So right now for the demo purposes, we're gonna choose uh, X, 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 X. So we're gonna choose, replace the X with any random numbers. So let's start with 2500. So 417-555-2500 becomes my telephone number for that particular on-premise network. So you're gonna accept, click save. And now you have a phone number assigned. So we're gonna close, you can order more if you prefer, but right now we're gonna close this. And you can, you have a phone number on your locations. This particular phone number is currently, if you look at it, you dial 417, you, you typed 417-555, but when it completed the setting, it actually ended, added the plus one sign at the beginning of it. So now this particular number, if I select, you got 
delete or move. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go to location. We're going to choose Las Vegas. And we're going to assign the main number to that particular phone number. Okay, successful. Okay, so main number is assigned. And again, it is PS10 connections showing as on-premise. If I refresh it, what you will see that the warning symbol, the, the triangle with exclamation mark or a large symbol is no longer present there. So that means I'm, not, I'm following whatever the guideline. Going back again, if you keep saying, you'll see that it might keep going to this, which is fine. Should have just accepted that. Okay, so I'm gonna say done. Okay, so location, if you highlight, uh, it might show you on the sign, but for now it's fine because we will config, continue to configuration and you'll see the differences. Now here from, from the phone number, you can configure some, let's say emergency uh, callback number, which will currently use the local uh, location main number, 417. Uh, location identifier, you could define uh, your PAC, uh, P access network info. Uh, we're not going to talk about that right now. You can also configure some notifications and uh, enhance calling feature options. So one thing we will do here, we do have something called voice portal, which is basically an IVR platform. So if you select the voice portal, we, you can define here your caller ID, for example, uh, VM, the voicemail, your last name. Uh, okay, so this will become your first name, last name, portal name, let's say uh, voicemail. And here the phone number, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, instead of assigning a phone number, we're gonna assign a, a four digit extension, for example, 6032. Pin number is going to ask you for a pin number. So we're going to choose a pin number. And for voice admin passcord, we're going to enter the pin number 13579. Uh, and you're going to enter a five digit pin number. Okay, so that pretty much, that's it. All we're going to do, voice portal, this is for your voicemail, uh, interactive voice response that can be managed and auto attendant. Uh, user in the site can call from any phone to access their voicemail message or change their PIN number using this by, by dialing this option. It says a passcode is invalid. So let's try again. One, three, five, seven, nine. 